Welcome back. We are here on eToro looking at the commodities market. And uh, first, we're going to look at WTI. Then we're going to look at natural gas and gold, copper and cocoa. So just to recap what happened uh, last week uh, on Monday and on Tuesday and Wednesday, we had uh, a quite a bullish run. Uh, we even uh, crossed the 200 moving average and also the Fibonacci retracement. Uh, however, we were on the, uh, the end of the trading day, we got basically sold back down. And on Thursday and Friday, we uh, continue our way back to the 15 moving average. Um, everything indicates that we will go and test the 15 moving average again. Um, this is an indication that markets are not willing to go uh, higher anytime soon. And the reason for that, uh, there are several. Uh, the world economy is doing really bad. Uh, world production is down. And uh, there is no technically uh, demand for oil is really low. So the reason for going higher from here is just is not existent at the moment. Um, you will have to have some major cuts or you will have to see the uh, world economy uh, coming back uh, significantly. Uh, and that is not going to happen anytime soon um, because we are experiencing a second wave of coronavirus. And uh, yes, uh, industries like uh, the airline industry, the travel industry and so on, they're still running on very low capacity at the moment. So... What we'll most likely see next week is that we are going to retest this 50 moving average. And if we break the 50 moving average, we are going much lower. We are going to, to, uh, to um, uh, yes, I'll show you in a moment where we most likely will go. Uh, but there's one thing I would like to add, and that is that there is so little volatility in this market. Now, these are the Bollinger Band that basically show the uh, volatility in the market. And you can see just uh, how much volatility there was in the market in uh, March and April and so on when we had this massive crash. Since then, when we went on our way up again, there was also quite a lot of volatility. But now it's just absolutely dead. This is a sleeping market at the, at the moment. But if we look at the other indicators, we can see the RSI. We are not overbought, we're not oversold, but we are heading downwards. The same goes for the stochastic. We are crossing the signal line and indicating that we're going lower. And the MACD is also on a downward trajectory. So, yes, I, I expect a lot more of this because this is clearly a market that that is, uh, that is not going up at the moment and probably not a... Uh, a lot of people that want to short this. Uh, so we'll probably just stay in this range for, for some time. Um, my bet is that we're going lower from here due to the fact that uh, demand for oil is just not existent at the moment. So if we were to break down, then we would most likely... We would most likely go and read the test these levels. So the uh, 38 Fibonacci retracement, the 50 and the uh, 61. So this is around 28, this is 25 and this is 20. And I would not be surprised if we went all the way down to those levels due to um, due to the second wave of Corona and, and that will basically affect the world economy even more. Um, it will affect uh, the demand for oil and therefore this market may go lower. At the moment, I'm just going to uh, watch and see if we break um, the 50 moving average. If we get a candlestick that closes below the 50 moving average, that is an indication that we will go much, li uh, much lower. If we get a candlestick, for example, if this candlestick here would have closed above uh, the 200 moving average, that would be an indication that we'll go higher from here. But at the moment, we are st still trading within the 250 moving average. And until we break out from those um, two moving averages, we'll just stay in this area here.
So next is natural gas. So this market was way more interesting last week. Um, we look at Monday. We had this enormous uh, uh, bullish candlestick here. And the, can, the bullishness uh, continued on Tuesday, also Wednesday. And now we are basically, we're, um, we had some drawback on Thursday. But on Friday, we also had a really uh, positive bullish candlestick here. And, well, even though this looks extremely bullish, we are still in a downward trend. So uh, we have been here before. We have uh, crossed the uh, uh, 200 moving average uh, three times. We here we can see one there, and we another one here, another one here, and also we almost uh, crossed the uh, uh, or ended above the 200 moving average uh, that was in in April. So this is not an indication that will go. Um, uh, go much higher and the reason why I say that is that uh, we take this resistant line here we have to break this resistant line in order to uh, go much higher um, also we're not in the right month of the year we are still in the end of the summer and usually these spikes occur uh, when we reach um, close to uh, October, November, uh, December, and January, and so on, the colder months of the year. That's when demand for natural gas increases, and therefore you have these spikes. You can see this is in, um, this is in, uh, this is in February, January, February. Do you see these massive spikes? We have this in, um, in October, November, and so on. So this is quite early. Um, we may go and test this resistant line here and then uh, continue downwards. And as you can see, we are in a downward uh, the trend. This is, 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 uh, is bearish and, and there's no reason why we should go uh, parabolic at this moment, even though this looks really bullish. We have been here before several times. And what I expect is to happen is that we go and touch this resistant line here and then we'll continue our downward trend until we get to uh, October, November and uh, and um, it will get much colder in the United States. Um, then we may see something that resembles, uh, probably not this, but um, we'll probably go and hit the uh, $3 uh, or two fifty or something like that. So... Next is gold. So gold has been an upward trend all the way back to, well, back last year. But in the last month, we've just seen us going to all-time highs. Uh, we look what happened last week. On Monday, we had a pullback. Then we had you know, three uh, massive bull runs on, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And on Friday, we had this pullback here. And this was to be expected. I expected it to happen on Monday because we have been overbought significantly in this market. Um, we are going to go higher with gold because as long as we have the coronavirus, as long as uh, central banks are basically destroying the currencies and... Uh, um, continuing with their quantitative easing and um, have low interest rates and, and so on, um, this market will go higher. This is a market that when uh, the economy gets into trouble, uh, people uh, start investing in. However, at the moment, we uh, this doesn't mean that we'll just go continue upwards. We will have pullbacks uh, in between, and this is clearly a sign of a pullback. So... The question is where we pull back to, and um, when we had when we have had pullbacks in the past, we have basically hit or crossed the two hundred moving average, and we have crossed the fifty moving average. So these two lines are supporting uh, support um, uh, well support areas. So first we'll go and test the fifty moving average, and if we 
uh, will go significantly lower than that, then we'll test the 200 moving average. I don't expect us to go to the 200 moving average. I, I expect us to see something like uh, what happened back in in this area here, when you have uh, two candlesticks crossing the uh, 15 moving average and then go higher. We may even not even get close to the 15 moving average. I would love to go here because that means I, I would start buying this. This is a, it's a fantastic area to, to buy and just hold your for for long term um but we may go halfway to uh to 1900 most likely um this will be a long ride we will probably take one or two weeks in order to uh, go to the bottom before we go higher and the reason why i say that is because these indicators are really negative uh, we take the rsi we can see that we are we have been significantly overbought for uh, several weeks. Um, so we are going to go lower before we go high. Uh, the same goes for the stochastic. We have broken through and we are heading downwards. But the MACD is not yet, uh, has not yet crossed the signal line. So uh, it will take probably one, two trading days before we do so. And then we will see something like this before we go upwards again. Uh, so this is not an area where you buy at the moment. Uh, you should wait uh, till we get to 1900, and uh, especially if we go go to the 50 moving average. This is a fantastic buying opportunity. So next is copper. So all the way back to March. And to the end of July, copper has been in an uptrend. At the moment, we have, uh, been, or the last two, three weeks, we have been uh, trading uh, sideways. And on Friday, we see this uh, massive uh, bearish candlestick. And uh, the reason for this is probably because one of the biggest... Um, producers of copper in Chile came out with a new estimate that said that copper will uh, fall significantly. Or they estimate copper to trade within this area at 250, uh, 25 or 24. Um, so in their estimate, copper is way overvalued at the moment and they expect copper prices to go much lower from here. Um, if that's right, that is to be seen. We have to first uh, test this 50 moving average, and then we also have to test the 200 moving average. But it was, should not be surprising that we went lower from here because the uh, three dollar level is uh, or has been uh, a significant resistant area in the past. So um, it was not surprising that we went back. If you go and watch my videos a few weeks ago, I also said that that we would uh, this were was a significant resistant area, and we will go lower from here. And uh, I was fairly right in that estimate. However, you could also um, analyze this as being a flag. So it looks like we're creating a flag at the moment. And that would be really interesting if we basically had a really bullish candlestick when we hit the 15 moving average. That would indicate that we will go much higher from here. So uh, the next resistance area is all the way up here at uh, 3 3. So we will probably, uh, yeah, if we have a uh, hit the 15 moving average bounce and we get a, uh, get a signal uh, that we are going higher, then this is the, the next resistant area. Um, there may well be. We will just have to wait to see what technically happens at the moment. Uh, technical indicators are really negative. The, if we took a look at the, the RSI, we are clearly in a downward trajectory. So the stochastics shows that we're going much lower. And the same goes for the MACD, that we're going significantly lower. So. I would be interesting if we got down to this area. This would have been a great uh, buying opportunity here. 
So last, we are going to look at Kakoa. So the last three weeks, we have been, uh, this has been a really bullish market. And it shouldn't be because economies are still not running on full capacity. People are not going out to cafes and so on like they did prior to the coronavirus. Our, probably the main reason why we had this bullish run here is because producers of, of uh, cocoa have cut back on their production. And uh, similar to, uh, to what OPEC does for W2I in order to get the prices of oil to go higher, this is probably the reason why we have gone higher in this market, even though there's no reason why we should do so. Um, I expected a pullback at the 200 moving average, but we clearly closed uh, above the 200 moving average, and uh, there is no signal that we're going lower at this current moment. The next resistance area is around here, is around uh, 2.6, and after that it is uh, 2.8, and after that it is 2.9, or around the 3. Um, we are clearly overextended when we look at the uh, uh, RSI, uh, but MACD is not indicating that we are going lower at this current moment. And on Friday, we had this really bullish candlestick. However, this is not a market I would get involved with at the moment. Um, if we were to get it, if I were to get involved, we should have bought down here. But, but uh, yeah, I expected this. I expected this market to um, to touch uh, the 15 moving average and then go much lower. I did not expect this market to go absolutely crazy to the upside but depending on supply and demand and and supply has been cut and that is basically you can show it shows on this uh, graph that had, that has had a significant impact so i hope you guys find this uh, video helpful you're welcome to support our channel by clicking the subscribe subscribe button and hitting a like and uh, well good trading and uh, uh, thanks for now. Bye-bye.